Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 16th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about how global all-time temperature records on the hot side are outpacing global all-time cold temperature records by a factor of about 10 to one for the present year. But before I get into that, I would just like to do a little refresher on what are the factors that are causing the observed global temperature increase now in the range of about 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And it, I, I like to call your attention to this graphic that has been produced by Dr. Gavin Schmidt and Dr. Kate Marvel, who are both climate scientists who applied the observed data on orbital changes, solar changes in the, um, in the solar forcing, changes in the volcanic forcing, changes in land use, changes in ozone, and changes in aerosol, as well as greenhouse gases, to see which radiative forcing factors correlate most to the observed temperature change. And if you're looking at orbital changes, orbital changes have not altered much during the past century or so. If you look at the solar forcing, solar activity has moved along a typical solar cycle and it is not generating a major force forcing in the in the in the form of increased or reduced radiation at the top of the Earth's atmosphere. If you look at volcanic factors, you find that volcanoes themselves have tended to remain also rather steady over the past century with regards to the number of eruptions. And, and, and these three sources represent all of the natural factors that would have or have the potential to have a major forcing on the Earth climate system. So all of these factors have been about steady. When you measure the amount of radiative forcing at the top of the Earth's atmosphere is produced by each factor. Now, moving over to human sources, if you look at a land use change, in fact, land use change has generated a bit of a negative forcing in, the, in, the, in terms of radiative forcing. Ozone has generated a mild positive forcing, but the amount of forcing generated by ozone is far less than the observed warming that we see. And if you look at aerosols, aerosols have actually generated a, a cooling effect that, that would have cooled the earth if something else hadn't warmed the earth. So what's the factor that is warming the earth? Well, it's greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide, which has generated a significant radiative forcing at the top of the Earth's atmosphere in the range now of about three watts per meter squared additional heat forcing at the top of the Earth's atmosphere. How do we know this? We have satellites that measure the changes in radiative forcing at the top of the top of the Earth's atmosphere and we have a, an assessment, a, a, a scientific assessment of, of the greenhouse, the, the warming potential of, of each factor and each change in the Earth's atmosphere, as well as the ongoing energy heading into the Earth from the sun. And the only major change in all of these factors has been the greenhouse gas forcing, which is trapping more heat at the top of the Earth's atmosphere in the form of watts per meter squared. Now, if you don't believe this science, you also don't believe in the same science that generates infrared sensors that do things like measure temperature or uh, develop heat-seeking missiles that can hone in on a heat source. It's all the same science. And if you don't believe in that science, you, you don't believe in you know, pretty much every form of, of, of infrared heat sensor in, in modern civilization. So it's basically equivalent to not believing that, that man landed on the moon or that the earth is round from a, from a science standpoint. So looking at, I, I, 
It's important to talk about this particular topic because we have so much misinformation coming from leaders on the issue of climate change. And, and the, the science, as I said in the previous video, is, is very settled. And, and the evidence for human causes to climate change are, are overwhelming. Now, looking at climate change in particular, drilling down to the past year, we have recently experienced the sixth highest September on record. It looks like this year, 2018, will be the third or fourth hottest on record in all of the global climate record. And I'd just like to show you uh, just another set of evidence about Earth system warming. We, we've had a, a little, uh, a bit of a cool, cold snap in the central U.S., and this has a, a few people talking about, oh, how cold is it? Well, just because the Earth system is warming, it doesn't completely eliminate cold snaps. But what it does is it, it weights the Earth system much more on the side of hot. And we see this in global temperature records. And if you look at the year to date, global daily record highs and record lows, you see that record highs are outnumbering record lows. If you take the high max and the high minimum and add them together, you get about 87,000. If you take the low max and low minimum temperatures, you get about 38,000. So daily record highs and are outpacing daily record lows by more than two to one. If you look at the monthly records, and these are like, if, if you take, say, for example, the month of August in a city or, or a state or, or region, you find that global record hot temperatures for, for months through, throughout the past year are at around 5,000 versus daily record low temperatures at around 1,000. So global, I'm sorry, monthly record hot temperatures, I, I think I said daily, monthly record hot temperatures are outpacing monthly record cold temperatures versus max and minimum temperatures on a five to one basis. So now before I get into the third measure, the all-time record summary, I just like to describe the, the difference between record high maximums and record high minimums and record low maximums and record low minimums. During any given day, you have a high temperature and you have a low temperature. Usually the high temperature occurring during the, the sunlight hours and the low temperature occurring dur during darkness. And so a, a record low maximum temperature would be the, the, a, a record low generally during the day. So Say, for example, if today in Maryland it got up to 18 degrees Fahrenheit, it's much warmer than that. I'm just using this as a hypothetical. But if it got up to 18 degrees, it, it, that might be a record low maximum temperature. If during the night it got down to minus three, that might be a record low minimum temperature. And the same thing happens with high temperatures. If it got up to like 120, it would be a record high maximum temperature during the day. And if it got up to say 98 at night, that would be a record high minimum temperature. So looking at the global all-time record summary, it looks like we got about a minute and a half left. The all-time records, and, and these are hottest temperatures on record during the day or during the night and lowest temperatures on record during the day and during the night, you end up with about 560 record high max and minimum temperatures and about 36 record all time low minimum and maximum temperatures. So the global all time records for hot on the hot side are outpacing global all time record low temperatures by a factor of 10 to one. So yet more evidence that the earth is warming, but also that human forcing in the form of fossil fuel burning primarily is really throwing a wrench in, glo in the global temperature measures. And there's one last little bit that I'd like to show you here. Snow depth. Snow depth, we've had no records for snow depth. Snow depth around the world is falling and, and that's a problem. So, so just a summary of global records 
Thank you for joining me. I'll be chatting with you soon.